Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. Celebrating Act Two. I'm here with Manny Pacheco and my partner, John Coleman, and we're going to just have another great segment. I'm yes, we are. Manny, it's summertime. What, yes. make, Wait, what do you think like of when, when some, you, some summertime, some summertime, summertime. summertime. What, Manny, what do you think of uh, in terms of movies when you hear the word summertime? What's what's the first thing that comes to mind? Well, though, I mean, I, of course, my my personal favorite is Gidget. Yes, yes. I think yeah. of Gidget and Moon Doggy and the, yeah. the you know the Big Kahuna and it's and the classic. Pete. It's the classic. Uh, summertime movies from what? The, where they were the sixties, weren't they? Sixties, right? But actually, they started in the late fifties with uh, with Gidget. Uh, that yeah. that was really the forerunner. Uh, of course, Sandra D. Sandra it, D. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now the TV show was in the sixties, but but you I mean you had to get through Sandra D. and Deborah Wally first. <laughs> Deborah Wally, great name from the past. Whatever happened to Deborah Wally? Well, she's no longer with us, but she had a nice little uh, television career for a while there. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my, uh, I remember a whole spate of these things. Uh, Frankie Avalon, Annette Funicello, they must have made a dozen of those things, and right. they were, they ran for three or four years. They were very popular. Well, it all started with with the whole Gidget thing, but I have to tell you that there's an individual who helped facilitate this, and it's a name you would not expect with those rom-com surf movies, and that name happens to be John Wayne. John Wayne? John Wayne, John Wayne was a big proponent of bringing these little pop teeny bopper stars into his films, and so you might see a film like uh, Rio Bravo, and there's Rick Nelson. Yes, well, I remember might that. The yeah. Alamo, and there's Frankie Avalon, and yeah. of course, if you watched uh, North to Alaska, there's Fabian. Yeah. And, but even even later, with True Grit, he did it with uh, Glenn Campbell. So what he did is he made it, he made it clear to producers that these uh, these teeny bopper pop stars uh, could act. And once that happened, the floodgates opened and movies could be made with them in it. Now, they were in important pictures as well. They were uh, Many of them were in The Longest Day, Paul Anka, Fabian, Tommy Sands. But these, uh, these uh, you know, I, not very good. I don't want to say bottom of the barrel, but they were, you know, just light, uh, fr frivolous kind of movies that were created by, now here's a great name, Samuel Z. Arkoff. For oh a, yes, yeah. Did did Arkoff do all the beach blanket? I call them the beach blanket bingo. Well, genre. you call them that. I call them how to stuff a wild bikini. But yeah. that's you know, here nor there. <laughs> but yes, Arkoff, <laughs> Arkoff made all of those. Yes, and you know each one had its own uh, kind of unusual flavor to it. Not only did they have these wonderful beach going surf bunnies, but they also had these classic actors who would offer support. I mean, folks that were going to be dead within four or five years, uh, people like uh, Peter Laurie yes. and Buster Keaton yeah. and yeah. Boris Karloff. And then they had these television stars who would pop in like Paul Lind and Wally Cox and Joe Flynn, yeah. Tim Conway. Uh, and of course, the ever reliable Don Rickles. So it wasn't just these beachgoers; it was also these the bevy of of uh, who's who of, of of comedians who would pop up, and 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 it'd be a whole lot of fun. Now, let me just tell you, there was one comedian above all that made these beach movies really palatable, really made a star of him, a cult figure, as a matter of fact, and that's the ever lovable Harvey Limbeck. Harvey wow. Lindbeck was just an absolute uh, gold mine for these beach movies. He played the villain. Yep. Yep. You know, there had to be some sort of yin to the yang of the beach go goers, and they were the motorcycle gang. Yeah. And, of course, uh, Harvey Lindbeck doing his best Marlon Brando created this wonderful, iconic character, Eric Von Zipper. What a great name, <laughs> Eric Von Zipper. <laughs> And, and I, you know, as a kid, I would watch these films, not necessarily because of the beach going aspects of it. I watched it for Harvey Lembeck. He was just great. Yeah. And, and I've, I've recently had a chance to watch one of these movies and Harvey Lembeck never disappoints. Never. Yeah. Also, also, he's so, a great uh, name. 
I'm sorry. Well, well Go ahead, wasn't Art. Elvis? Uh, uh, he hacked onto this thing. I seem to remember yep. a couple of uh, uh, beach scene things, oh, but yeah. that was probably at the tail end of the rom coms. But... And they weren't very. I mean, I mean, Elvis had his own fan base, but they weren't watched by the traditional beach going groups. I mean, th these had to be people who watched these films. They had to be people who loved the Beach Boys, Jan and Dean, The Ventures, Dick Dale. I mean, that's that's the, 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 the if you love their music, then you were going to love these movies. Yeah. And you're right to call them fluff. They were they were just summer. It's like a a, a, a book that you read at the beach in the summer. It's light. It's an easy read. It's a good adventure for a while. And you toss it away and you go on to the next one. And that's right. what these movies were. They were just pure fun. Um, and I think they were. Ultimately, there were so many of them for so many years, but ultimately it was Frankie Avalon and Annette Funicello who seemed to be the icons of that era. Well, they were the anchor. They were the adorable couple. And But I have to tell you, it almost didn't happen for Annette Funicello, and it was by her own hand that would determine the, the, whether or not she was going to be in it. And, it. and it's for a remarkable reason. First of all, Annette was a very, very much so, she was a practicing Catholic. And the idea of running around on film in a bikini didn't really set well with her her faith. And I know I know she was a practicing Catholic way into the time when she started uh, experiencing her her health problems, because I was a member of her parish. I actually would see Annette at my parish in Encino at the church that we would go to. But but she also had an image not only for herself, but she had an image that she was harboring. Uh, for for an entire company, and that was Disney. Yeah. She, of course, yeah. was very popular, uh, you know, with the Mickey Mouse Club, and she just didn't want to disappoint her uncle Walt, and so she went to Walt Disney, and she says, "What do I do? I want to further my career. This is a great opportunity, but I don't want to hurt the brand." So Disney, with all of his um, candor and his smarts obviously uh, encouraged her to do the program, uh, the, the series of, 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 of movies. And, but he had wonderful sage advice. He says, well, I think we might be able to get around some of the things you might be worried about because of faith and because of brand. Why not, instead of wearing a bikini, you wear a one piece. And anytime you watch these movies now, if you see Annette Funicello, She's very rarely, or if at all, ever in a bikini. She's always in a one piece. And yeah. that satisfied her issues and the branding issues of Disney. That's interesting. Yeah. That's so, interesting. So Manny Pacheco is true. Our Hollywood historian of things that were little known or forgotten. And mm -hmm. this one, the one, I remember the one piece. Yeah, she I she filled it. it out very nicely, but oh. it was a one piece. <laughs> Everybody else was in it. Okay, a John, okay, John, we almost had like a nice family-oriented ending here, oh, and so a, and <laughs> well, I guess we have to thank you for. Um, but hey, listen, those those movies were so squeaky clean. They were for nothing they, compared to even the television today. And and may I say, uh, John, you're probably moon doggy. That would make Art the big Kahuna. <laughs> Well, I want to give you some uh, end credits here, Manny, because in between these episodes, uh, and they get and they they're pretty decently frequent, and we have a growing playlist on uh, celebrating Act Two. That's with the number two on our YouTube channel. Uh, they people in in the interim, when they just thirst for more Manny, can go to www.forgottenhollywood.com. And see stuff you've been. That's that true. Not true. Yeah, absolutely. Yours. Uh, and I, I write blogs and. and yep, and it, your new stuff. Your new. Yeah. Uh, I love your new blogs. I mean, the the fact that you're constantly pumping out uh, insightful and fun recollections of Hollywood. It's it's a great thing to do when you're when you're hunkered down and uh, you're able to still share with an audience 
something that is hopefully a little bit of a, 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 a ray of sunshine and otherwise, in some people's cases, a, a very long, arduous and sometimes very boring day. So I'm happy to do that. Well, we all appreciate it. Thank you, Manny. Appreciate it. We'll see you soon. We'll talk about Hollywood again. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.